Are you a foreigner in Thailand trying to figure out how to buy Bitcoin? Maybe you've tried to buy from an exchange that you were previously using in your home country, but you got stuck because they wouldn't accept Thai bot deposits. Or maybe you've never bought Bitcoin before and you're just trying to figure out where to start. In this video, I'll show you the complete process of how to buy Bitcoin with Thai bot in Thailand from account setup to withdrawing your Bitcoin into your own wallet. All right, let's get started. Before we begin, I need to make something clear. This video is for educational purposes only. I do not provide financial advice, so please pause and read the full disclaimer before continuing. I'll be doing this tutorial using the Thai exchange called Orbix. This video is not sponsored by Orbix, but after trying several Thai exchanges over the years, Orbix is my preferred option in Thailand, so it might be a good option for you as well. And if you use a different Thai exchange, the process will likely be quite similar. On Orbix, you're just gonna click the register button at the top of the page. Now to register, you're just gonna enter an email address and password and confirm your password. This is the easy part. Now, once you have this done, you're gonna be directed to completing a KYC process. This is known as know your customer. So all Thailand crypto exchanges require you to go through this process in order to prevent fraud. And as foreigners, you're going to need to provide a passport and some other information to prove your identity and location. In my case, I eventually did have to go into the Orbix office to complete a short form in person. It only took a few minutes, but it is worth noting in case you have to go through that same process. Just remember that the KYC process is the most difficult part, but you only have to do it once. Once your Orbix account is verified, you will need to log in and then... You're gonna click on the wallet area and into a section called deposits. And this is where you're gonna deposit your Thai bot. Now I've always used the instant payment method because my bank account is connected to Orbix. And remember to prevent any money laundering, they're making sure that the deposit account you have linked to your account are gonna match your name perfectly. So it should match your passport or your ID. So in my case, I'm gonna click the drop down and click on an instant fiat transfer. In our case, we need to fund our account with fiat currency, which in, is going to be Thai bot. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter 10,000 Thai bot here. And once I click submit, I'm gonna have this QR code and I can scan it on my phone and deposit the money from my bank account right away. A lot of the mobile apps will allow a very seamless money transfer. So right now, when I scanned it, my bank mobile app stated that it, it's requesting 10,000 Thai bot, which matches what I had entered in. I'm gonna go ahead and accept and confirm this transfer on my phone. And within a few seconds, there you go, it was about one second, the deposit has successfully gone through. Next, we're gonna scroll up and click on market at the top of the page. And this will lead us to the different cryptocurrencies and stable coins. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Bitcoin here. And this is the market for buying and selling Bitcoin. Now this will seem confusing at first, but don't let it overwhelm you. The key to note here is that this is all these orders of individuals that are both buying and selling Bitcoin. And what you'll see is the price of Bitcoin in Thai bot. So at the time of this recording, one Bitcoin is costing around 3,180,000 Thai bot. But that's not one price because you have a lot of different individuals that are both buying and selling. And so if I look here, what I can see is the prices on this left side, if I move upward, the price gets higher and if I move downward the price gets lower and these at the top are all individuals who are selling and these individuals at the bottom are people who are buying so obviously if you're buying you want the lower price and if you're selling you want the higher price so right here where they meet is where an individual could submit an order and expect that they could either get a buyer or a seller at that exact price now in my case what I'm going to do is I want to get an order to go through as quickly as possible. And so my way to do this is going to be to first pick the price. So I'm hovering over this buy Bitcoin area and I'm gonna click on the price and I'm going to click the best price that I can get where there's an order that's at least as large as the order that I want to make. There's an individual that's selling more than I even want to buy. So I'm gonna click on this because I'm fine with that price. 
And then what I'm going to do is click on how much I want to buy at that price. And in my case, I have 10,000 bought in my wallet. So I'm going to click, I want hundred percent of that. And now what we see is if I am able to buy at that price and I'm spending hundred percent of my 10,000 Thai bot, then the actual amount I'm going to get is 9,981 bot. So it's not going to be perfect because there's sort of a rounding process here. But in any case, let's see if this order goes through. If I click buy, so let's go ahead and click this again, say that I want 100% of it and click buy Bitcoin. And now I'm going to have to enter my password and we're going to go through. So let me go ahead and scroll down. Now, as you can see in the open orders right here, there are no open orders. And the reason why is because that Bitcoin that I bought, it went through right away. As I said, someone was selling at that price. I clicked the buy. They sold it to me right away. So it went through. If it hadn't gone through, then my order would stay in the open orders section and sell, until someone did end up selling it at that price. Or if they never did, because the price continued to go up, then I might need to cancel that order. But as you can see for now, what I've already done is I've made my purchase and it went through right away. If I go over into my order history, I'll actually see the order that I just went through and it will show me the price that I paid, the amount that I received, and the average price that I paid. So in the case that maybe my purchase was spread amongst different sellers, then the price that I paid might actually differ from my average price paid. But the idea is that I can see here how many Thai bot I spent and how much Bitcoin I got in return. But the next step is going to be to actually withdraw this Bitcoin because you don't really want to keep a lot of Bitcoin on an exchange, even if it's a trustworthy exchange, because you never know what's going to happen. So you can see that once I click on my wallet, then I can actually view the balance in my wallet and I can click on this withdraw button and make a withdraw. And I'll be directed here to withdraw my coin. So I can select the coin that I want to withdraw. In my case, it's going to be Bitcoin. And I can select the network I'm going to use to make this withdrawal. So it's actually sending a transaction on a blockchain. And so I'm going to click to withdraw using the Bitcoin blockchain. And then I'm going to enter in the address that I want to send that Bitcoin to. I also tend to use the max withdraw. So it'll tell me exactly how much I can withdraw from my wallet, how much I have. It'll also show the transaction fee. And this transaction fee is 0 0.00025 Bitcoin. This is the fee that I'm charged by Orbix and by the blockchain altogether in order to get my Bitcoin out. And if I want to do a conversion right now, you can see that it's about 789 bot for this withdrawal. So just know that every time you withdraw, you are going to be hit with this fee. And it still is pretty substantial in this case. So that's why I don't always withdraw every transaction that I make. I'd wait until my actual amount of coins in my wallet was large enough that I was worried about keeping it on the exchange. And what that amount is will depend on you and your risk tolerance. But I usually wait until some amount has accumulated in my wallet. And then I'm going to go ahead and do one batch withdraw and send it to my own personal wallet. If you don't already have a Bitcoin wallet, one I could recommend is Moon. This is a very easy to use wallet. It would be the best, in my opinion, for beginners because of its user experience. Also, it's easy to back up. So there are a couple of methods for storing it just in case you lose your phone. It's just going to protect you there. A blue wallet is another great one. It's a bit more advanced, very powerful. I use it a lot as well as Nunchuck, another powerful one. My personal preference is Nunchuck, but again, as a beginner, I would say Moon is a good starter option. Alternatively, if you do have quite a bit of Bitcoin and you're buying quite a bit each month, then you may consider a hardware wallet, which is really just a way to store your Bitcoin offline in a way that it's much more secure. And so another starter option for a hardware option is going to be BitKey. And this, as you can see, it kind of looks almost like a rock. It has a fingerprint sensor on it. And then it is tied to an application on your phone. But if you actually want to send money, you can't just open up the application on your phone. You'd also need to tap it to that hardware device. Another alternative is Cold Card from CoinKite. And they have a few options, the Cold Card MK4, the Cold Card Q. These are very, very powerful. They can do a lot of stuff. If you want to grow into it and learn more about Bitcoin over time, then this would be a good thing to try out as well. I hope you got value from this video. 
If you did, please click the like button. If you're interested in more videos about living and working in Thailand, subscribe to the channel. It helps me a ton, but more importantly, I promise I'll do my best to provide you with useful content every week. All right, I'll catch you on the next one.